So I've got something pretty cool this week. It's a little trick I learned from the NAP creative director, Felix Nelson, and it's kind of a variation on a technique he used on working with textures. But we're going to take it a step further and uh, apply it to text and get some really cool effects um, with some uh, text and textures and even some layer masking. So we're going to start with three different texture images. You see I've got this image of this little rusty panel here, and there's a little bit of a stone texture here, and this kind of scratched metal texture here. So what I'm going to do, and this is what I got from Felix, is be combining these textures in a way that creates a completely new texture and something you may not have seen before. And the cool thing is, with, with the more textures you use, you can try different variations to get a completely different effect altogether. Let's begin by going ahead and, and putting each of these textures into a single file. So we'll go ahead and use this as the base image, and let's go over here and grab this, and I'm just gonna drag and drop it over. Now, before I drag, I'm gonna also include the Shift key and hold it down while I'm dragging over, and it will just put it right in the middle. There's that. I'm going to minimize this. We'll take the next one, go ahead and drag it over. So now we've got all the images now in one single file. You'll see over here in the layers panel, there they are, all three are. I'm gonna go ahead and unlock the background layer. I'm gonna do the cool little trick by taking the padlock here and just drag it to the trash and it unlocks the layer quick and easy. And all I'm gonna do now is simply change each of the blend modes of these layers to overlay. So I'm just gonna change this to overlay. You can see it's already giving me a different look there overlay here and we'll change this one to overlay as well. Now what you'll see is a variation of these textures being blended together giving us a very interesting look. In fact I'll zoom in here so we can get a closer look at it. Now all three of these layers are in overlay blend mode. Now if I go and I just rearrange the order it's going to give me a different look depending on which one is stacked where. So it, it does matter where the images are stacked and will ultimately result in an interesting looking texture. But I think I like this one right here. Actually, I'm gonna put the metal on top. There we go. So with this uh, configuration, it actually gives me a really kind of worn out, rusted look to it, which is kind of cool. So I've got all the textures blending nicely. Now I want to combine them into a single layer. Well, I'm gonna use a cool trick by merging all the visible layers in this image without actually flattening it. So you just go over here into the uh, layer panel menu, hold down your option key or the alt key if you're on Windows, go down here to merge visible and it will create a merged copy of all the visible layers right here above or the above the selected layer. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and turn off these layers here and let's go ahead and put a new layer underneath this current layer. So I'm gonna hold down the command key and click the new layer icon and then just go ahead and give this a black fill. So now we're gonna use this text or, or use this texture rather inside of text. So what I'm gonna do is go over here, grab my text tool and just set a text layer. And I'm just gonna type the word danger and we'll go ahead and make it really big. In fact, it's in impact font right now, which is fine. This actually works just fine for what we're doing here. So I'm gonna go ahead and press command A into a select all and just center the text both vertically and horizontally in the middle of my layout here. There we go. Now, I'm going to do a couple of things with this texture here. I'm going to first create a duplicate because I'm going to do, do two different things with it. So I'm going to go and drag it down, create a duplicate layer, and I'm going to position this duplicate above the text layer. Let's go ahead and turn off the duplicate or the original texture layer for now. And then, so we've got this texture layer sitting above the text layer in my layers panel. I'm going to go ahead and hold down the option key. That would be the alt key on Windows. Click in between the layers and you'll see you get those overlapping circles and it turns into a clipping group. So now it's clipped that texture inside of the text. Well, now I wanna add a little bit of a layer style to this text just to give it a little bit more of a dimensional edge to it. So over here in the layers panel, let's double click on that layer and add a bevel and emboss. And over there, you can see it's already given it a little bit more dimension, but let's go over here and change a few things first. Let's go and change the technique to chisel hard and even bump the depth up to about a thousand all the way up there. Now, the size is a bit much. I'm gonna actually drop that to around two. And I think that looks pretty good. It's gonna be a nice, hard, dimensional edge on that. And if we wanna change the position of the lighting, we can do that just by repositioning the angle here. But I think that works like, looks like it works pretty good. And we'll go and click OK. Now, wanna give this kind of a worn out effect. And this is another thing that, uh, that I learned from Felix that was kinda cool, is I've got this text layer with the texture clipped inside of it. I'm gonna go ahead and add a layer mask to that text layer. 
because I want to keep this editable text, but I want to be able to apply a, little, a bit more of the effect to this. So with the layer mask selected, I'm going to go over here and into the toolbar and grab my brush tool. And we're going to use a really small, hard edge brush here. In fact, we'll go that small, about a nine pixel brush there. And let's open up the brush panel and let's uh, change the behavior of the brush here a little bit. I'm going to go over here into the shape dynamics and take the size jitter all the way up to 100%. But I am going to go ahead and turn off pen pressure. So it will not respond to the pressure sensitivity. Well, next thing is I'm going to go ahead and activate scattering. And you can see the scattering is on both axes. And it's I've got it bumped up pretty high up here. But there's still a few more of these little dots than I want, them to, want there to be. So I'm just going to jump over here to brush tip shape. And then just push that spacing out. It spaces those dots out quite nicely. So now, if we go inside the brush here, or inside our document, painting on the layer mask, making sure that we're painting with black. Black is set as my foreground color. And if I just do some casual strokes over this, oh, that's a little lot. You can just kind of dab holes in this, and it kind of gives you that, well, in this case, it's kind of giving you that kind of cool bullet hole effect on it. So it's giving me that kind of worn out look, maybe that's been shot up because it is a danger zone. But this is the kind of effect you might see in a movie title or a video game title where they're just taking and just applying various effects and various textures in very creative ways. And of course, this is a scatter and I'm probably getting a little crazy here. Let's just kind of wear out this bottom of this R here. But the cool thing is you can just go crazy with all kinds of weird effects and brushes. Now, what I am gonna do is go back over here into that brush engine and turn off those settings and bring that spacing back down just so it's a straight streak of a brush. And because these letters would appear to, they would kind of appear to be worn out or anything like that, they wouldn't necessarily have smooth ed edges all the way around. So we'll just kind of take this um, brush, very straight edge brush, again, we're still painting on the layer mask, and just kind of loosely kind of hand draw along some of these edges, just so they have a little bit more worn out look to them. So they're not so perfectly straight or anything like that. If you want, you can even go inside it a little bit, just kind of have this kind of just kind of wasted away look about it. Just giving it a little bit more age and wear to it. All kinds of cool things you can do with this. Now, the beauty, now obviously I could spend a tremendous amount of time going through this and doing all kinds of cool things with this just by painting these areas away. But the cool thing is this. This text is still editable. Look at all these effects we've applied and all the distortion and everything we've applied to this text. It is still editable text. If I go over here on that text layer and double click and highlight it, I can change the text to, I don't know, maybe I wanted to do my name. Well, there you can see it's keeping that texture effect, but the layer mask we drew when it was a different lettering. So the only thing you'd really have to really kind of redo is if you don't like the way it looks. Actually, this kind of looks cool the way it is, but if you didn't like it, just select that layer mask and fill it with white. I'm just going to press Command Delete, which would be Control Backspace, to fill with the foreground or the background color, which is white. And you can start all over again, reselect the brush, and then continue to apply the effect to the new layer. So you don't have to go all the way back to the very beginning in order to get this effect. You can actually go re resubmit or retype some new text and just make a few tweaks on the layer mask, and then you've got the same effect without having to go through it all over. But now, just as a final quick afterthought on this, remember I created that duplicate of this texture layer? Well, first thing is I'm going to go ahead and undo back to the word danger there. There we go. And let's go ahead and reactivate that layer. I'm just going to put a quick layer mask on this layer to kind of fade it back in the background to make it a little bit more interesting. In fact, let's go ahead and add a layer mask here. And I'm going to use the gradient tool using the foreground to transparent gradient right here. It's the second one. Do make sure that black is set as your foreground color. I'm simply going to press the D key on my keyboard and hit the X key. There we go. So now using that gradient tool, I'm going to come in from the top, hold down my shift key and just drag in from the top, drag in from each side. Again, I'm holding down my shift key to constrain my proportions here. In fact, let's come in a little bit closer here. There we go. Perhaps even drop the opacity of that layer down just a little bit. Do it at about 55 so the lettering tends to stand out a little bit more. And to make that the text even stand out that much more, let's go ahead back into that layer style for the text layer and go ahead and add a drop shadow. There we go. The simple default setting I think will be fine. There we go. But there we have now very cool text using those textures in a very interesting way in more ways than one. Of course, we used the texture for the text, but then we also employed it in the background as well. So very interesting ways. Experiment with your own textures. Come up with all, all kinds of cool things, and we'll see you next time.